Hello and welcome to the Knit Sip Happy podcast. This is episode 39. My name is Nancy and I'm coming to you from the east coast of Canada, just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick. How are you? It has been six weeks since my last confession and life has been busy. The drinking game for today is busy. Uh, I'm probably going to use that word a lot and my apologies, apologies in advance. It is Saturday, August 31st. It is a long weekend here in my part of the world, so our store is closed. So I have an extra day off. It is a delightful, I think, 22 degrees out here today. Low humidity, so I thought we'd come and hang out outside because um, it's beautiful. I may get distracted. I already have. There's been a hummingbird feeding over at my fuchsia. Uh, so I may... Oh, and there's a big bug in here with me. Excellent. All right, welcome. I've missed you. Uh, I'm finally caught up with all the comments from previous episodes. I hope the wind noise isn't too distracting, um, but we are going with outside. It's too nice for me to stay inside today. <sighs> Cheers. I am drinking. It is a, the last weekend of summer, technically. Uh, kids go back to school on Tuesday, so I am drinking a little cocktail today. It, this is called Miami Vice. It's a mix of a uh, strawberry margarita and a pina colada. So I'm just having this on a little ice. It's lower alcohol, which is not a bad thing when I'm chatting because this could be a long one. I've got quite a few things to show you and talk about. So that's what I'm drinking. What I'm wearing is an oldie but a goodie. This is Emerald by Isabel Kramer. <clears throat> Uh, knit and Drops Bell. I will have the project page linked below with all of the details and modifications that I made. Uh, I will put some pictures in up here. Uh, I, it's this fun kind of detail here that's replicated across the back as well. So I'll take a couple of pictures of that and put them in here so I don't have to get up and turn around. Uh, love this one. It's DK, so it's good for cooler summer days. Definitely not for the uh, high 20s, 30s kind of weather. A little too heavy for that. But today with the breeze and sitting in the shade, this is the perfect weight. So when I'm drinking what I'm wearing, ah uh, yes, Ooh, here comes the wind. Um, I owe you some pictures of Samantha in her Surrey shirt. I showed it to you last time and uh, she very kindly sent me some pictures of her wearing it this past week so I will put them in here. Nice relaxed fit, she's really happy with it and she's been wearing it quite a lot um, since I've give, given it to her and that's always a great sign. It was made in the Sadness Garn Tin Lena so easy for her to launder and take care of as well. So I do have another sweater quantity of that for her in a light, really light pale blue gray, gray color. But that's a next summer thing. I'm I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up the summer knits. The biggest thing in my making in the last six weeks has been I'm all over the place. I can't settle on something. Um, obviously, if you've been here before, you know the wedding happened on August third. I'm going to save all of that chat and pictures until the end. I don't have many pictures yet. The photographer is still editing his. We'll talk about all of this at the end. Wedding chat and pictures will be coming at the end, what I have. Um, and life chit chat will happen at the end as well. But you'll see from my making, I've been a little all over the place and not able to settle on anything, which means I've got lots of things. So I should say you can find everything I talk about linked down below. I also include chapters. So if there's a section that you want to skip, feel free to do so. I will put a screen up here. This is where you can find me on the internet. I am knit, sit, happy everywhere. Um, so if you would like to chat, feel free to do so in the comments. You can send me an email or follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I think that's all of the administration to go through. So we're going to be doing our usual format of FOs, whips. I've got some design chat. I've got some spinning and a teeny tiny acquisition section and quite possibly a bumper chit chat section. So let's get going, shall we? So the first thing that influenced my making for the last few weeks anyway, 
there was a call on Instagram back in late July. What was I thinking with the wedding coming up? But uh, I signed up to be a, a, an ambassador for Knit Picks. Knit Picks is an American uh, yarn company, uh, yarn tools. They sell patterns. I have quite a lot of their yarn in my stash. They are a budget friendly, for the most part, uh, company. and. I, I enjoy their product. So I signed up to be an ambassador. So on Instagram, you had to do posts and tags and all this stuff. So I was digging through stash to grab things um, in Knit Picks yarn. So the first few items I don't have here, they were given to various people for various reasons. So um, we're gonna start with the Knit Picks products on that end of the world first. So I had mentioned that I was gonna be knitting my lovely mother-in-law, Olive, some slipper, some of the Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks using uh, Knit Picks Hawthorne. I'm putting, gonna put some pictures up here for you. I pulled two colors of Knit Picks Hawthorne out of my stash. I held it double. It's a great workhorse yarn. It's an 80-20 blend, um, quite thick. Uh, it doesn't have as much yardage as a, as a traditional fingering, so it comes up to more like a heavy fingering. So I doubled that and it made great slippers. I've, I've used that yarn for, for her before. Um, so she was staying with us um, for uh, a few days uh, after the wedding and um, she took those home to Newfoundland with her at the beginning of August. So you've had pictures of those. Um, the other finished object that is nitpicks that uh, I finished is actually a twofer. I got two of these cowls, so I used Knit Picks Wonder Fluff in this ripple heather and the other color was a navy called Abyss Heather. So I've got all of my information on my project page as to how I did this. I got two cowls out of two balls of yarn. So this was the first one I did. This is called the Slash Dot Cowl. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, I need to apologize. Uh, I told you guys last time that the Isabel Kramer um, summer hint of summer was a free pattern. It is not. I apologize for that. Um, I misled you there. I don't know if it was free at one point and or if I was just completely wrong, but I was wrong and I apologize for that. If I sent you over there saying it was free, it is not. It is a paid for pattern. I was supposed to look on my phone for my notes before I sat down to record and I haven't. So things may be coming to me as we go, or there may be some editing afterwards. Back to this slash dot cowl. This is indeed a free pattern on Ravelry and it is just cast on in the round at the bottom, a little garter border, and then a really nice combination of slips and knits gives you in the two colors, gives you this great texture. So this was the first one. I did the navy as the border and then this one fell off. I record, I reversed the colors, the color placement and used the ripple heather as the cast on bind off. So these are delightfully light and fluffy. The wonder fluff is a blown in yarn. So it's got a uh, I guess a nylon core that the fibers are blown in. So it's 70% baby alpaca, 23% nylon and 7% merino. So I'm guessing it's the merino and the alpaca that is blown in and the core that uh, the netting that uh, it's all blown into is the nylon. I have knit with this yarn before. I think I made a hat with it. Anyway, it's really, really nice. Very lightweight um, and it's gonna be super warm. I will not be putting it on. Um, there were some picked, I'll put some pictures that I put on Instagram earlier this week wearing them. I believe those are going into the gift pile. I'm tempted to keep one of them, but I, you know, I have a lot of cowls and knits as we all do. So I, I think I'm gifting both of them. They're going into the gift pile for now. Oh, I'm going to have to pause you. I forgot to bring a sock blocker out. Hold please. Okay. <laughs> I am back with a sock blocker in hand. Now, I haven't woven in the ends on these. This is a little pair of shorties. So these are the two colors that I used for the perfect slipper socks I showed you pictures of a little while ago. I had 
brought my uh, tablet for Ravelry. I had 30 grams of the lighter color, the open mic color. And what I used for heels and toes, I had 22 grams of what I used for heels and toes. So I thought, yes, that's enough for a pair of shorties held single. And I used my, or used the button trick. I'll put a link, I believe it's up on this side. Um, I'll put a link to a video tutorial I did showing how you can use the inside and the outside of a ball of yarn with a button on both strands just to control the twisting and the tangling. So I did that and I cast on toe up, but these, um, I forgot the Hawthorne, as I mentioned earlier, is a thicker weight fingering. So the yardage isn't as long. So I really, really played yarn chicken on these. So let me just, so this is probably a lady's five and a half, maybe a six at a squeak, but it has a very short non-existent leg. And I just finished this. So I cast them on toe up and then did the toe in my dune grass or winter, uh, wintry woods, winter, wintry woods. I don't even remember the name of my own pattern. <laughs> my toe up sock toe, my rounded toe. I did that. And then I did my Niord stitch pattern. So Niord is a DK weight sock. And this is a traditional 64 stitch sock in fingering. So what I did, I just added some extra stockinette stitches into the middle section. So it has two panels of texture. So I added some extra stockinette here, extra here, and extra here to round it out to 64 stitches. I didn't change the stitch pattern at all. So if you have the New York socks and you don't have DK or you don't want it at DK socks, this is a super easy modification just uh, where it's not an all over texture. It's just these panels that run down the front and don't they look great? twisted stitch and some kind of slip stitches with one over one cables, one over two cables, sorry. So yeah, I just finished it. I haven't woven in the ends. I played a whole lot of yarn chicken. I didn't have enough for this bind off. I had to cut off an, I had to weave in an end on the toe and use the yarn to finish binding off. So I'm gonna have to bind, to weave these ends in really, really well. Um, but I managed to get a third project out of two balls of yarn. And again, no leftovers. The big advantage with these two, the cowls, where I reverse the colors, I used two of these, I believe they're 50 gram balls. Yes, they're 50 gram balls. I used one of each color and I got two cowls out, no leftovers. I used every single bit of it. Um, this was a little too close for comfort and as you know I have form for this starting socks and then realizing I didn't have enough. Um, I have no explanation or excuses for myself. This is what I do. <laughs> so I do have two and you can see I haven't woven in the ends or blocked these but I did want to show you. So I will link my project page for this um, and it will also be linked to the, to the New York DK socks. If you have any questions specifically about how I adapted this and you already have the pattern, just reach out to me and I will certainly uh, tell you what I did to make this fit in a 52, in, in, sorry, in a 64 stitch setup. So these are also gonna be going into the gift pile because they're commercial sock yarn and will uh, will wear really well and they're also way too small for my feet. All right, all right, all right. So that's the finishes I have in the Knit, knit Picks yarn. I have a couple of things on the needles, I think also in Knit Picks, maybe just one. So let's carry on with the rest of the finished objects. Again, some I don't have, 
some I do. Actually, I think all the rest of them I don't have. They're just pictures. Um, my friend Deborah Yarn Indulgences was going to Knit City Calgary, which I sadly was unable to attend because of the day job and had asked me to knit a couple of samples for her. So I knit another simple thing, which is a DK weight, um, simple board, um, I cord bordered scarf. I'll put some pictures. I might actually put some video in here while I'm talking. Uh, I held, this is using Deborah's, is it the indulgence? Again, my apologies. Oh, wait, I have my pad with my Ravelry information on it. Let me get that for you. I've knit one of these for her before and she needed another one knit up. So I did, it is indulgent luxury and it is a alpaca, 70% alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. And it has this beautiful heathered gray tone to it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so I held this yarn double. It's a fingering weight to get the, uh, the gauge that I needed. And then I put a video on Instagram showing you my lazy way to block something like this. So I'm gonna put this video up. I may have already done it while I was talking. Uh, I soaked it, uh, didn't take out too much water, just gave it a quick whip and th uh, wrap in a towel. I didn't squeeze it out and then hung it on my clothesline and weighted it with clothes pegs on key points just to uh, get the shape that I needed. Nice windy day and it just dried beautifully and held the sh gave me the shape that I wanted without having to fuss and pin it out. So that was a win-win. Have you tried? blocking like that with with gravity and some clothes pegs it's uh like i said for certain things it's a great way of, of doing it without like i said without having to spend the time to pin it and get your shape so i finished that that went to calgary as a sample the other thing that went to calgary was a single sock i'm counting it as an fo because this is the sample that i did it is um I used the Lake Ontario, my Lake Ontario sock pattern, and I used this sock marl yarn, and the colorway was Seaside. Really soft greens, sandy tones, bit of kind of lavender, purple, and then offset with the black marl section in there. I love working with this yarn. Um, you know I've knit with this before. Oh, and this beautiful little turquoisey section as well. Lovely. So I knit a sock. I don't even have a finished sock picture for you. I just have one on a blocker in progress. Um, I was running out of time and needed to get it done so it could go to Calgary. And we were heading into the wedding prep week as well. So it was all a little, it was all a little nutty that week. But I got it finished and I have lots of yarn here to do a full pair for me. Probably. Probably. Unless Deborah needs it for something else. So, where am I at? So, the last thing you had seen in progress last time, all of those you had not seen. Those were all new cast-ons and finishes over the last six weeks. The last one that you had seen were the pair of socks I was knitting for Roxy, my sister-in-law's mom. I've knit for her before and I was using my smoke gets in your eyes pattern and surprise, surprise, I was running out of yarn. I did them cuff down, so I had to find a solution. So I'm gonna show you the picture here of the finished socks. Um, as I said, I started cuff down, so I was working with the Lillian Pine Fireworks color that I had done my Christmas Eve cast on and a hot pink from my stash I didn't have enough of either. I realized after I got through the gusset decreases, I was really running out of the main color. So I grabbed a skein of Knit Picks Stroll, just a scrap out of my stash. I don't know if I put the color in here. I can tell you that while the picture's up on the screen. Maybe, did I put it in there? I did, yay me. It was uh, Stroll, tranquil really pretty 
on the bluier side of green, kind of teal, I guess. And it worked perfectly. I started fading it in. I worked, um, I didn't fade it. That's not true. What I did, you can see in the pic, hopefully you can see in the picture, I might zoom it in for you. The stockinette rose, I just uh, made it the tranquil, the stroll, and I kept the patterned rose with the Lillian Pine fireworks until I got down to the toe and I did the toe and the tranquil, the knit picks stroll. And I think that was really effective. I think it was a great way to salvage a project. Um, yeah, the joy of working with leftovers. You think you have enough and you get to a point and realize, crap, I don't. So now I need a plan B or C. So I think these worked out really well. I had a lovely thank you card in the mail from Roxy this week saying that she had been given her socks and she loved them. I wanted to get these done to give to my brother and sister-in-law when they were here for the wedding. And I did. So they went back to Ontario with them and uh, she loved them. So that was a definite win. So that's it for my FOs. And now I can actually show you physical things. That was a lot of pictures and stuff I'd already finished. So apologies for that. Where shall we start? As I said, my mojo has been all over the place. I, uh, I couldn't settle. I couldn't decide what I wanted to knit. I didn't want to think. I started a, me a new medication and it made my, it's made my brain a little weird. Um, I think I'm settling into it now, but I, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a struggle the last few weeks. I have to be honest coming down. I thought originally I thought it was just coming down from the wedding and all the crazy busyness and work has been busy. Are we drinking for busy? So we've got a real mixed bag of things to show you here. Let's go. So in this lovely bag that I won from Tracy, who was, uh, who is now knitting on the float out in British Columbia. This is when she lived in Toronto and this was made, um, by Christine who lives in the UK. And I love, love, love this bag. So what this bag has been holding is leftover scraps of sock yarn, mostly from socks I've worked designs in, that I've been knitting little nano socks. This is a free pattern on Ravelry, and I have been knitting quite a lot of little nano socks. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> These are for a different project. These are not um, the ones I've done uh, designs in. These are going to be for something else that's happening later in the fall. I'll tell you about once I've confirmed the details. But this is a cute little, just a mini sock. This I-cord is supposed to be sewn in. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to do them in bulk. And then it's just a little ornament that you can hang on a Christmas tree or in your craft room or use as an advent, whatever. I have modified this pattern um, to make it wider and to fit to the way I prefer um, the sock to look. So I will copy and paste those instructions into the, make sure it's in the project page that I link for you. But I have been knitting these like crazy. They're knit toe up with basically a little mini flegal heel to turn the heel and then up the leg an I-cord bind off and then you just knit some I-cord and like I said, I just have to stitch that in. So I have been doing this in loads <coughs> of scrap yarn. This is a sock marl from Deborah. This is a single ply. I don't know from when or where, when Brad was making my magic knot ball. You can't magic knot a single because it doesn't hold, it pulls apart too easily. So I thought using up some of these singles would be perfect for that. I've got another marl. This is, I've got two or three of these, pretty color. I can't remember what this one is. Was this the Nancy color by Sweet Skein of Mine? It might be, it's a custom gift die that De uh, Amanda did for me. Um, 
Yeah, I've got I've got loads. I've got loads of them. And I've got one on the needles right there that I managed to scoop up. <clears throat> this is Titty Gaga leftover yarn. So I just have a large handful of these that I have to sew down the I-cord. They were just brainless. Um, and there were just days where I couldn't, I didn't want to put a t-shirt on try on cords. I didn't want to do my math to figure out where I was going to start A-line shaping. I just needed easy. And these lovely, these fun little socks scratched that itch on the days where I was, I was struggling a little bit. So I will keep working on these. Some of them will be, um, I've used yarn that I've designed patterns in that I will keep for my Christmas tree decorations. Like I said, some are from for a project that I'm doing later on that I'm going to tell you about maybe next time I come see you. It's nothing that exciting. I just don't have the details yet to tell you. The other project that I fell back to because again, brainless, uh, it's an acute little bag that I got when I was visiting uh, my husband's family in Newfoundland. This maker, it's got beautiful. I love the lining. The lining kind of sold me, but it's kind of a nice neutral on the outside and this fun. So if you've been here before, uh, you'll know this bag is my knitted knockers bag. So I just keep a stash of the recommended yarns in here and knit and knit knockers. So this is using the Kobu that I had picked up when I was in Ontario for Knit City. Um, I, I've done, I said I've got one, two, this is a slightly darker kind of mauvey pinky color. Is that it? I've got, yeah, four four fully finished ones and I've got one more on the needle. So one of these, when I talked about knockers the last time, so if you're not familiar with this, these are prosthetics for, men, for people who've had mastectomies. I do the no nipple version. I still find it pointy enough. Um, so the version that I like to do, I've discovered now, is I knit from the nipple and then increase out and then you do these pearl, two pearl rows and then you work the decreases on the back. So this is the part that is touching the body. I did one of them backwards. I believe it's somebody had sent me a link and thank you very much um, to knit them backwards. They would be less fiddly. And I ended up with quite a lot of laddering when I did it this way. I don't know if it's the yarn. I have been struggling with this Kobu a little bit for the knockers but yeah anyway I tried one of them back to front and I decided even though the cast on for the front to back is very fiddly I prefer doing it that way so I've got two more of the light pink and two of the dark pink to add to the stash I really am gonna have to uh, get these into the mail to Ontario to the uh, lady who does all this organizing so you just send them like this and then they can open them up, stuff them, and send them to um, the people who are requesting them. They are so soft. This is a great charity or volunteer type knitting project that is just good to have on the go. Uh, the yarn isn't that expensive. There's lots of approved yarns and you can go online um, in your country. I'm, I'm sure if you're not in Canada, I know they're in the US um, as well, but I'm sure they are around the world and you can find out more information about knitted knockers And if I'm clever, I will have a link down there. So editing me put a link down for knitted knockers Again a nice brainless easy Don't need to think about it too much kind of project What I started I have something that I started before the wedding uh, a new project I thought I was going to need some vanilla knitting in and around the wedding. Um, the We did the week before we were doing a lot of driving back and forth to Fredericton, um, helping prep the backyard and the food and everything that we are just the logistics of organizing a simple backyard wedding. <laughs> um, so I cast on, I dug into my turtle pearl 
stash and pulled out Kiss Kiss, which I thought was appropriate for the wedding. I will gift a pair of these socks to Sam. And I cast on, I did ribbing on my nine inch circulars and just knit a tube. And then did ribbing, ribbing on the other end. So they don't match, which is okay because the second one will. So I've already cast on the second. So if you're not familiar with Turtle Pearl Yarns, you get two matching skeins. This is the contrast. I'll put a picture in here from Instagram where I showed a sock in one of the skeins. And the two skeins match each other. So this is the full tube that I will easily get two socks out of, but they will not be matching. What I'm going to do is where I've started here, this sock will match. So I'll have the pair will be this one and this one, and then the other pair will be this one and this one. I keep noticing this. Obviously, that is not part of the die. That is somehow during wedding week, I got something on there. So that'll just come out when I wash it. But ironically, it's almost the same kind of brown as the as in the yarn. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Um, so yeah, I got one tube finished. The, I didn't finish this tube until well after the wedding. Again, this was just brainless. I just needed to turn my brain off and not think because I was so tired. And yeah, so I can't remember where I was at, at, after the wedding. Um, we had done a lot of driving back and forth, so I was working on it. Um, I knit a little bit on it wedding day, but teeny tiny amount. Um, it was busy. I need to slow down. I'm not going to make it to the end of the podcast. So yeah, simple. These are going to be afterthought. I will measure halfway. I will put two needles in here, cut for the toe, separate. I will add in toes on each end, and then I will cut in the heels on each sock. So I will get two pairs of socks out of this easily. Um, I probably, I may, yeah, it's just heels and it's just heels and toes. I may have enough yarn. This is a 20 gram mini. If not, I have lots of pink or other colors I can put in for the second pair if I need to. So that is living in one of my favorite project bags um, for socks. It's an oldie. It's my telephone box. Box bag. From Zigzag Stitches. I am right saying that, right? Yes. <laughs> Zigzag Stitches in Ontario, Canada. Uh, I, she, I know she doesn't make these bags anymore, but I, I love it. Just love it. And it's perfect for a single sock. Okay. Kiss Kiss Tube. Um, we're going to go to a garment that you have seen before. This is not going to be overwhelming because I haven't done a lot. This is using Yarn Indulgences Silk and Linen Fingering Weight. This was an oopsie skein that I got from Deborah. It's Twilight. It has a random speckle of blue every now and again, and she couldn't sell it, so I took them off her hands. I have two skeins. I'm helical knitting at this point, so I've got lots of things attached. And I really need to do a try on. Hang on. Let's, let's do this first. So this is Laia by Isabel Kramer. I have knit this before in a dark purple winter weight sweater. This is a super light kind of wisteria colorway. And I just started helical knitting after I finished the yoke. So I have done my usual modifications to this and they are on my project page. Let me just confirm that. Laia. 
I've cast on the size four slash five, which means I cast on the four for the neckline and increased out to the five for the bust. I did an extra set of short rows at the back, just to kind of lift um, the back a little bit, which is my preference for fit. So I did an extra set of short rows at the back. I've done the yoke, I've split for sleeves. I don't have my math in here for the numbers that I used for uh, moving the sleeves back. I'm going to put the video, I can't remember which side, that I did uh, a little while ago talking about how I modify my sweaters for my pear shape, for my body shape. And thank you so much for the lovely comments and feedback that I still keep getting on that video as you're finding it. Um, lovely Kelly from Lay Family Yarns, um, who's become my friend. She thinks she uh, forced me into it. I am thrilled. Um, she recommended that video and uh, there's been a lot of extra people having a look at it. So thank you for that. If you found me through Kelly, hi. Um, yeah, so I don't have the numbers written in this project page, but my numbers don't really matter. You're gonna have to do your own math if you decide to do this anyway but all the information of how I modify my sweaters is in that video that is linked. I put the little link card up. It'll also be linked below if you miss it. So yeah, I am working. I'm started. I'm underneath the body here. So I'm working down the side. You can see the light bulb safety pin markers are there. So I've already started increasing out for the body. My A-line shaping has started. I need to try this on just to verify for fit, and then I need to do the sleeves. Cut the yarn, which I hate to do, but I'm gonna cut the yarn, pick up for the sleeves, get those done to the length that I want them, and then I know whatever yarn I have left is what I have left for the body. It is August 31st. Um, I have a sinking feeling that this may get hibernated. It may not. However, because I'm only, I'm just in the stockinette. So once I get these sleeves sorted out, then it's just knitting, knitting, knitting. And the way my brain is feeling right now, um, it might, it might stay out. Even though I'm itching to cast on new things for fall and winter, the reality is I do not have the brain space for it. And I will not have the brain space for it for probably another month, month and a half. And I'll, we'll talk about that in chit chat. Maybe even longer. Um, so stay tuned. It's lovely. It's going to be amazing to wear. I, yeah, I don't know if it's going to get hibernated or if I'm going to keep working on it. We'll have to see. If it's my knitting. I will, I, I have no problem knitting on something in linen in the, uh, in the winter if it makes me happy. And I have on here my little Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog that just make me so happy. <laughs> Love the Muppets. As I said, I finally got caught up on comments from the uh, Podiversary episode where we were talking about Christmas Christmas movies, and a lot of you telling me you, you liked the original Christmas Carol um, movie, like the black and white, the OG. I'm a fan of the Muppets Christmas Carol, because that's how I roll. The other garment I have going, and you haven't seen this one yet, but I did show you the yarn last time. Let me just pull up my project page and make sure I have it here for information. This is in my pretty bag from my friend Donna, who is M-O-D Designs, I do believe. She's going to be at Woolstock East in New Glasgow in two weeks, two weeks today. That's a horrifying thing. We'll talk about that more, that more at the end. And she's also gonna be at PEI Fiber Festival in October. This great waxed canvas on the bottom and this beautiful floral fabric. And the yarn inside matches the pink. So it had to, it was a match made in heaven. So after I podcast last, before the wedding mania really took hold, I decided that I would cast on. I talked about it. I didn't put on what date I started it. That's interesting. Normally I'm pretty good at that. I don't think you've seen this before and I don't have stitch stoppers on there, which means I'm playing fast and loose. This is my Lotus Lake Tea in Sadness Garn Lena in the colorway 
four, six, two, six is pretty pink. I am going to be playing Yarn Chicken because I decided to up my size. I have eight skeins of this equaling 880 meters and the size I picked is in the 900s, possibly into the low thousands. Oh. Um, which is why when I realized this I abandoned it because I have just pulled a whole bunch of stitches off the needle. I was so annoyed with myself. <sighs> Means I really shouldn't have cat done this cast on. This was kind of a spur of the moment. I didn't swatch because I have knit with this yarn before and I know the gauge that I get and I know I've knit this pattern before and I know, anyway. So I kind of went rogue and cast it on. Gauge is fine. I just am not gonna have enough yarn for the size I wanna make. Did I tell you this is the Lotus Lake Tea? by Annie UT Knits. It is a mess. I had some knots that I had to cut out of the, one of the balls of sadness, which was a bit annoying. So it's a drop shoulder design. So you start at the back and work some short rows down the body until you get to the sleeve depth, then you stop then you go back, you pick up the front stitches, work this scoop neck, and same thing, short rows down, and then you get to join it in the round under the sleeves. And then Anina has this great um, part of the pattern, which I love, because I don't, you know I don't like drop shoulder designs until this one. There are decreases under the arms to bring that sweater into your body a little closer so you don't look so square. I, I need to try it on. The neck feels like it's huge. Um, part of me wonders if I should just go ahead and pick up the neckband. I need to try it on first and see where I'm at. This one I think, I need to try it on and decide if I'm ripping it and then hibernating it for next year or if I think I can save it. I could probably get more of the yarn if I think I like it, but I need to make sure it's the same dye lot. This I got at Galt House of Yarn and they may still have some of the same dye lot. Um, but again, I just, I realized what was, what was happening and I just said, hmm, swear word, swear word, swear word, and put it back in the bag and tried not to be too annoyed with myself because I know better. But. It was a rash cast on and I'm paying for it. It's been lovely knit so far. Um, but I think, A, I think I've got the sizing wrong and B, I don't have enough yarn for this size. So I'm knitting it on my Chowgu interchangeable sets. So I'm gonna have to put it on some of the silicone try-on cords and see where I'm at and then decide if I'm just gonna put the stoppers on the needle and leave the cord in there and, and leave it till the spring or if I'm just gonna pull it right out, uh, rewind the yarn and try and forget about it. <laughs> try again next year. <sighs> Things happen. I'm trying to, I try to keep my podcast non-sweary, but uh, I should know better. Moving on, moving on. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update on this little, <laughs> this is now this. I showed you perhaps the, um, the start of a design. It is not a design at this point. I cast this on just because it's pretty Turtle Pearl Dream Room yarn. Do I have the ball band in here to show you? No, I don't. I just have the contrast color and the so this one is in my Studio Brita personalized sock sack. Oh, I love this bag. This was a gift to myself for Christmas four or five years ago. Um, Brita will customize, you tell her what colors you like and she'll customize your patchwork and, and do custom embroidery, uh, machine embroidery for it. Uh, cannot recommend this bag enough. It is the perfect little sock size and I will have her linked below. 
So this is just on a nine inch circular waiting, waiting for me to come back to it. Um, there's nothing urgent here. Like I said, I thought it was going to be a design, but it just didn't, it wasn't showing up with the yarn. So I've just bailed on that and moved on to something else. The last whip I'm going to show you that isn't a design is a test knit for my friend Manon, La Violette. Um, she used to run La Violette Yarn Gift & Co. She is now just uh, La Violette on Instagram. I will correct that if I'm wrong. In my fun red wine bag, this is made by Twisted Daisy in St. John, New Brunswick, and she no longer makes bags, I don't believe. This was a birthday gift to myself a few years ago. Are you sensing a trend? Um, this is kind of uh, acquisitions as well. Uh, I'm going to put a picture. Uh, Manon was showing pictures of her Lift Me Up mittens. And I said, please, can I test them for you? I would love to. And she very kindly said yes. So I, I went stash diving and found something I thought would work, cast it on, didn't like it, ripped it out, found something else, cast it on, did a half a mitten, my gauge was off, it was too big, I didn't like it, ripped it out, and then thought, you idiot. Why don't you reach out to Deborah at Yarn Indulgences, my friend who's very close, lives very close to me, and ask her if... <clears throat> I could have some yarn for this, yarn support for this, plus it'll be a great sample in her booth for the Maritime Yarn Festivals, well all the yarn festivals, but Manon is here in, uh, in New Brunswick, another Maritime maker, so this is a fully New Brunswick project. It is yarn from a New Brunswick dyer, it is a pattern from a New Brunswick dyer, and I am the knitter. So I have picked. Deborah brought over a whole bag of joy to my work yesterday and had me pick. So I'm using the Surrey Silk Base, Surrey Silk Fluff, which is 437 yards, 400 meters and 50 grams. It's a Baby Surrey Alpaca Silk Blend. And then the uh, fingering weight is Lux Silky, which is 75 superwash merino wool, 15 cashmere, 10 silk. So lovely, lovely to work with. Um, this Lux Silky is a one of a kind, but this Surrey Silk is called Blue Collar, and they are working up beautifully together. So let me show you what I've done so far. The test on this isn't due until the middle of September, so I, I kind of was okay with ripping out and trying again, ripping out and trying again. I have my fun little donuts that I got from Ginger Snap at uh, Knit City. One pink and one chocolate. Deborah has the same. We have one pink and one chocolate each. Let me, let me, let me, let me. I'm putting it on backwards so you can see the fun bit. So we've got this beautiful kind of cabled ribbing and then fun stitch design on the front of the sock. I've just split for the thumb. It's got a thumb gusset and just vanilla stockinette on the back. And how lovely. I'm so happy. Third time is definitely a charm with this project. Uh, it's making me much happier. The gauge is much better. It measures like it's supposed to. Um, and if you're coming to any festivals where Deborah Yarn Indulgences is vending, so that will be Gage Town. Oh, no, it won't. No, it won't be Gage Town because that's next weekend. I won't have it ready yet. And the pattern's not out. So uh, Woolstock East in New Glasgow, PEI in October. You will see these mittens on the stand. And I'll also be sharing them on Instagram when Menal releases the pattern. And I'll show you when they're full as well. So... And I should have enough to do a second pair, but we'll see. <laughs> How much yarn chicken am I going to play with that? So that is my last work in progress that isn't a design. So we are going to wrap up the whip section technically and move on to design chat. Uh, it has been a long time since I've done a design and even though my brain wasn't really back with me, I guess it was back enough that I just felt the need to get a sock on the needle for a design. 
Uh, I haven't released anything since Knit City Toronto, which means I designed them. The last design was in April. So it's been a few months. And I kind of, it just kickstarted, it just kickstarted my brain again, I think, for the most part. Um, this pattern, <sighs> whew, I just drifted off there for a second as I was trying to think of the best way to talk about this. Uh, the pattern <laughs> is in testing. Uh, it will be out the next time I come to see you. I'm hoping for the second week of September, but I'm not sure about that. Um, circumstances have been fluid in my real life and um, busyness. Have a drink. I'm almost out. I can't. Um, so this is um, another Knit Picks uh, yarn that I decided to use. To, I've had this yarn in my stash for so long and I've never used it and I really wanted to use it. So let me just grab my sock blocker that's buried. I'm actually knitting, I have a full pair, I'm actually knitting a third sock right now because I managed to zoom through the second sock and forgot to do the tutorial that I needed to record. So now I'm knitting a third sock, which means I will have a pair to either gift or wear and I will have one to keep as a sample for photography for later on. I like to do that. So let me show you the yarns first. Boy, I'm sorry guys, I am, I've kind of gotten a bit rambly all of a sudden. This is Knit Picks Stroll. It's a tonal colorway called Blue Violet. And this is a mini called, is it Underwater? This was a mini in a mini set. So the information is on my Ravelry page. Uh, I love Stroll. Nick Pick Stroll yarn is very soft, um, but it machine washes for the recipient if they need to. So like I said I've had this in my stash for ages and just wanted to use it. So I, I put a picture on Instagram of the mini set and was trying to decide which color and this underwater or I'm going to have to look it up because it's driving me crazy. While this is booting up, in my lovely Top Sail Canvas pink bag that I picked up at Fiddlehead Fiber Festival from the lovely Sadie, I have my eye on another one, at least, of her bags uh, next time I see her. Deep water. I knew it was water something. Deep water. So, I have two finished socks. And I said, I have a third one on the needles because I need to do a tutorial. So this is called the Missing Mojo Socks because my mojo has indeed been missing for the last little while. Design Mojo has been missing for months. Uh, the Knitting Mojo briefly left me, but um, thankfully has come back. And it's this great texture pattern down the leg and then just carrying on with the broken rib down the foot to the fun stripe at the toe. So every second round of this pattern is plain knitting. It's the perfect amount of keeping my brain busy without making me too, too busy. I'm not having the right words, but it's not vanilla so I don't lose the will to live. So these broken rib panels one of them is continuing down the front or the each side of the sock and then down the middle of the foot as well. Let me just turn the sock around to show you that. <laughs> so that broken rib has kind of three panels going down the foot. I didn't want to put the texture on the foot because these pearl ridges might be annoying in your shoe. So we've just got a little broken rib down here just to keep you engaged, but not too much. The pattern runs all the way around the leg. Super fun to do. I just have to do a little tutorial for this um, right and left slip cross. If you've done my Hexi Diamond socks before, they've been in there. Have I done them in anything else? I love this little slip cross technique 
without a cable needle. It's very rhythmic and fun to do. So I just need to update that to a tutorial to link in the pattern for this. Um, yeah, so like I said, I have a pair and then I have <laughs> a part, a start of a sock that's in the middle of a row. Welcome to the brain that is me right now. This is not me. I don't normally have this many on, much on the needles and this much on the go. It normally makes me twitchy, but right now it's kind of what I've needed. So missing mojo socks coming at ya. I'm hoping, I'm hoping 9th, 10th, 11th of September, hoping, but I don't know. I can't guarantee that um, based on, based on life right now. I do have another design on the needles. I'm hoping for that one to launch at PEI. Deborah, Yarn Adultist, and I have a uh, idea for a collaboration. I'm still working on the sample sock to see if how it works up to write up. Struggling with it a little bit. I put it down, but the reality of time, I need to get that going and get it into testing as soon as uh, Missing Mojo socks are done testing for it to be ready to launch for October 3rd, I think, for PEI Fiber Festival. So I've kind of created some work for myself, but I really, I was just hoping to jumpstart myself back to some sense of normal. And then I've kind of been given a kick in the ass to remind me that <laughs> you're not the boss. <laughs> the world has other ideas right now. Um, Oh, and also a little update, that checkerboard Felici sock that I showed you last time, I'll put a picture in here. I was hoping to develop that as a design. The problem is it the stitch count only works and the design, the way it, it works, only works on a 64 stitch sock. It's a 16 stitch repeat, which sounds terrible, but it's really not, it's, it's easy to remember. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I, I've tried to adjust it to bring it down to an eight stitch repeat to uh, so it fits in a 56 and 72 and it just doesn't look right. Um, so that one's on hold for now. Um, I have a thought. I Anyway, it's on hold for now. I may come back to it in, later in the fall. So that's the end of design chat. We're going to do a real pat, quick pass through spinning because this is another thing that has been giving me great joy when my brain has been a little haywire. This is the third bump of the spunky eclectic that I showed you that was gifted to me by my friend Deborah for my birthday back in April. I showed you uh, singles. I can't remember if I showed you any plied last time but I now have two full or almost full bobbins uh, that are three plied. And I am working on the third bobbin plying and still spinning singles. I had a thought for this. If this plumps up when I wash it, if it plumps up enough to be something approaching a DK weight, I was thinking I might have enough to do a Jethro cardigan. I would do all of the Jethro cardigan squares just in the hand spun. I would just crochet them all up and then I would pick a light mauve or a gray or a cream, probably not cream. That would be bad for sleeves <laughs> and a hem. I'm thinking I'd like to find something in this like light purple mauve color, lavender color to do sleeves and the button band. So this is all pie in the sky in my head because I, I don't know what the yardage is and I don't know what it's going to look like when it puffs up, if it's going to give me the DK gauge. But when I finish the third bobbin, which should be my last bobbin, I will skein these up, wash them, dry them, pray to the poofy gods that I get a DK. I'm looking at myself, so sorry. I need to be looking at you guys. That's a, that's a rookie mistake if you've been back to the beginning. I hope that the yarn puffs up enough to get a DK gauge and I can see myself doing a Jethro over the winter. Yeah. The ends are the one thing that's really turning me off on that, but I'm going to have to weave in all the ends for each square, but 
I always, I'm never sure what to do with, with hand spun in this kind of quantity. And I think just in a plain sweater, it might be a little banana pants and it's too much just to use for a yoke. So I thought crochet, sorry for the sneeze break. Yeah, so I think crochet squares for this could be great. I may be able to adjust my gauge, but I'm not a great crocheter. So Leanne, my friend Leanne, um, has, is on her third or her second Jethro and her second one is completely off gauge. So I may be, may be coming to Leanne for advice if I decide to go ahead and do it off gauge, if I can't get gauge. This is all, who the hell knows, because who the hell knows. All right. That's it for the crafty um, content. Specifically, I have a couple of acquisitions to show you. Um, and then we're going to go into life chat, chit chat, wedding pictures, whatever I've got, and just general ramble or waffle. I'm just thinking back, Kelly of Lay Family Yarns has been doing general waffle, like Katie from Inside Number 23. I'd forgotten that. Katie was one of my first youtube podcast loves um and she doesn't podcast anymore because she has a busy growing family and who can blame her anyway so back at in the beginning of august no second week of august, oh i don't remember tracy's rolling yarn shop from nova scotia it is a yarn shop in a trailer i'll put a picture in here um came to moncton and if I'd had room and a parking lot big enough, I would have had her parked in my business's parking lot um, to, to, for people to come and visit and, and shop. And, but I didn't. My parking lot is too small. But the business next door to me uh, had a big enough parking lot. And I called them and they very kindly said that, yes, that uh, Tracy could set up her, her rolling yarn shop in their parking lot. And um, yeah, it was fun. I got to hang out for a little while. My friend Leanne from St. John was there. I got to see some of the local knitters. I got to meet uh, Menon was there. Uh, Tracy obviously was there. We'd met up um, the night before. They'd met up for dinner. I just came kind of whizzed in after work. Um, Menon, Sophie, Deborah, and Tracy had dinner together. I just kind of came in to say hello and meet Tracy. I'd never met her. And uh, she's delightful. And um, I was really excited to, I've never, been in a yarn shop that is in a trailer and boy is there a lot of stuff in there I think I failed and I don't think I took any video if I did I'll put it here but I have a feeling I did not I was in there with people and we were chatting so but um, Tracy usually has lots of information on Instagram she may have pictures as well so what I got from Tracy because I need no more bags but this judgy sheep says knitwit it's Judgy Sheep knitting the pink scarf, cowl, blanket, sweater, whatever this sheep is knitting, I was here for it and had to have it. Really pretty pink trim for the uh, pull strings. It's canvas, so it's still a little stiff. I haven't used it yet because I've been waiting to show you guys. And a little handle for carrying. So I said, I don't need another bag, but he was just she. For some reason he reads a he for me they I should be a little more gender neutral they um, appealed to me I grabbed a little interchangeable for my nitpicks uh, for my zings set I find I use this 20 I believe it's 24 I use this shorter cable yet yeah, it's 24 inch cable quite a lot for my garments it means less pushing and pulling around when you're working in circular I find 32 I like my needles a little, I like my stitches a little closer together on the needles, I guess. So this 24 stitch, I think I only have one of them, maybe two in my set, and I just wanted to grab another one for sweaters. And then I grabbed this yarn, just drops fable in the colorway 542 in greens and navies and grays, great manly gift socks. Um, I would love these socks for me, but I don't need any more socks. I have a lot and I, I, I prefer to keep the ones that are hand dyed that need hand washing. These can be machine washed, so that makes them perfect gift socks. So I had to have two of these to make some manly socks. And that is all that I bought, my friends. 
Um, yeah, but I had that bumper, that bumper uh, boost to my stash from Gold House of Yarn last time I was here. I'm just having a quick look at my notes. That is it. So we're going to chit chat. I have no idea how long this is going to end up being and I apologize if it's a long episode and if you are not interested in life stuff and wedding stuff. Um, I will say goodbye and see you in a three weeks, I hope. Um, two weeks as, as New Glasgow. Yeah, three weeks will probably work really well. Um, so I'm hoping to take some vloggy style footage from Woolstock East in New Glasgow. I'm teaching a class, my Sock Hill Clinic class there. If you're in the area and interested, there's still room in my class. The link will be down below. So the last time I saw you was about a week before the wedding, uh, maybe even two weeks before the wedding, and um, I took a week off work, and Brad and I were up and down the highway a lot. I've got some pictures of me following the T-Bird, pictures or video, I can't remember. We took our 1960 Thunderbird convertible up to Fredericton for, uh, to be able to use as in wedding photos and, and stuff. So. Um, that took Brad and I, uh, took me to my wedding and Brad and I back from our wedding at the church in 1992. I may put a cringy picture in here, I may not. Um, so that T-Bird has been a big part of our lives and Sam wanted it for her wedding as well and that was uh, lovely, but we had to get it there. So driving on the highway in that car is not a lot of fun because usually only doing about 85 to 90 kilometers an hour and things whiz by you pretty quickly. And it's also very low. So when the transport trucks pass, it's very noisy um, and a little intimidating because you're looking up at them. I didn't have to drive in the T-Bird. I was driving my car and I just set my car on cruise and followed Brad up in a quite leisurely manner listening to my audiobook. He was in the sun, in the heat, kind of baking a little bit, having to really focus. So his drive was a little a little more tiring than mine was. But we got it up there. We got it parked um, into a garage and uh, ready to be stored for the week until we needed it. Actually, um, it was also really cute. Um, Brad let Rob drive it. Uh, they had a practice session and went to the covered bridge where they were going for their pictures. So Rob and Brad and Sam went for a drive and I may have a little bit of footage of that there with, uh, with them going off in the car with Brad letting Rob drive the car. That's a big thing. He would let me drive it if I wanted to. I don't want to drive that car. I like to be the passenger princess where I can just knit. We go out for picnics and I get to drink most of a bottle of wine and he just gets a little bit and then he drives me home. I like to be the passenger princess in that car. So he let Rob drive it because they wanted to be able to go off to their pictures, um, place they were going for pictures just with them and their photographers and not have their, you know, her father standing there staring at them while they were taking their pictures. So they had to have a practice. So I got a little footage of that. Um, we had a busy week. We were back and forth uh, getting the, everything ready and pr doing prep work. Rob's family was in from Alberta. So we kind of put together, we had a planning, a major planning session on the Sunday and divvied up the work jobs and the chores and figured out uh, the best way to use all of our various talents. Uh, and then on the Friday, we left early and we moved into an Airbnb. I found a house um, about only about 10 minutes away from Sam's place. Uh, it was an up down duplex that slept 10 people. So we were able to have my mother-in-law with us, my brother and sister-in-law from Ontario. Our son and his girlfriend came. Our friend from Halifax also came up. So we were all in the one house Friday. Oh, the weather, the weather, it was so, stinking hot. Most of that week was into the mid 30s with high humidex values. So we were into the high 30s Celsius in humidex, which is approaching 100 degrees C. I think it's in the, the 90s. And we were running around like crazy people and then coming back into the air conditioning and trying to stay hydrated and get things organized and, and ready. And it, it, it was tiring working in that heat. Um, we got everything, you know, the tent came on Friday, table and chair pickup happened on Friday, AV pickup happened on Friday, um, Sam's friends who were doing the flowers were there helping out and getting some of that work prepped. 
uh, her bouquets were from a local um, vendor who is at the farmer's market and they came on Saturday but the flowers that we used for table centers and um, gift tables and the arch and stuff all came from Costco did you know that Costco did bulk flowers I had no idea so you order them on their website and um, we turned one of the smaller bedrooms at Sam's place into a cold room which worked out really well because we were running out of fridge space so we had a room air conditioner and we kept the door closed and we made it super cold in there so we had all the flowers windy we had all the flowers in buckets of water in this room that was as cold as we could get it and then we were also putting some of the squares and breads and things in there as well that uh, we just didn't have room in the fridges and freezers anymore for them we had bought a spare well sam and rob bought a spare fridge and freezer on facebook marketplace just to be able to store all this extra stuff we knew was going to be happening so yeah it was it was a beautiful day sam and rob were both very very happy with their day um it was hot and humid and we were busy setting up and trying to do all of the things in the morning and then get out of there so the girls could get ready do their hair and their makeup and do the girly things have mimosa and brunch and I went, we went back to the house and showered and and thankfully our Airbnb had air conditioning as well. Um, Brad and I got dressed quite early. We had early photo calls. Um, I'm going to preface this with saying that I will have been putting some videos and pictures up, I think. Um, I don't have any pictures of me other than a very, a couple of very hot sweaty selfies. Uh, the photographer has given us a smattering of pictures that he's edited, but we have not had the bulk of the pictures back yet. And I was so busy running around. Busy. And when I wasn't running around getting things done, I was trying to be, I was in the moment. I was, the things that I knew I had to do and, and check on, I made sure was when nothing was happening that I needed to be involved, that I wanted to witness and take in and enjoy and be a part of. So I have very few pictures. I only, I have this hot, sweaty selfie of me and Brad after the ceremony took place. Um, as I said, it was in the high thirties and it was sticky. We never even lit the table center candles on all the tables in the tent because it was just too hot. We couldn't, we couldn't add more heat. Um, our son, Zach and a couple of Sam's friends very kindly figured out how to lift the flaps on the far side of the tent. So if you've seen in pictures I've showed so far, we had the tent set up three sided closed with the long side open for us to go in and out. We ended up opening up the back side as well, just to try and get some little bit of cross breeze through because it was, it was very, it was very difficult to, uh, to sit and be comfortable in those kind of conditions. Uh, Sam was thrilled with her wedding dress choice. Um, it has a large slit up the front, so she was able to ventilate a little bit by wafting her skirts. And for the most part, she said she was comfortable through the whole day. She looked beautiful. She was beautiful. Um, had a couple of moments. I'm going to have one now. She, um, she had the day that she wanted, so mum mission accomplished i don't have many pictures of me but the day wasn't about me and i know you guys want to see my dress and stuff and i will bore you with those later i don't even have i don't even know what i looked like in full length really because our airbnb didn't have a full length mirror and by the time i got to sam's i was busy um getting stuff ready and helping her uh, get dressed for pictures and things like that. So I was really hoping that the photographer's pictures were going to arrive before I filmed. They haven't. Um, so I will, I will be sharing those on Instagram and I will share some here when I get them. I loved my dress. I was really happy. Um, I was really happy. I, people, I had some really nice compliments and I was very happy. I felt very comfortable in it. I was very happy with my dress. Uh, Brad looked very handsome. Rob and Sam were amazing. They did. They wrote their vows and um, had us all had us all going. Archie uh, was adorable. He was exhausted. He he normally sleeps eight hours a day and then has crazies and then falls asleep again. 
because of all the activity and people around, he hadn't slept through the day for days. So he was very calm and chill. And um, we had a little rehearsal with rehearsal practice on the Friday night. He walked up the aisle after um, once Rob got up to the, um, the arch, the little pergola where they were having the ceremony. Sam let him, released him and sent him down to Rob and he had fake rings tied around his neck with a, with a tuxedo. Again, I don't have any pictures of him. I have pictures of him relaxing, but I don't have any pictures of him in, in the tuxedo. I'm, I'm assuming Zach, the photographer, will have that for us. Um, on wedding day, he uh, took a little tour around the, um, the congregation, the group of, he recognized Sam's friends and had to go and say hello to them. So he took a circuitous route to the aisle, but he got there in the end and down to Rob. And uh, then uh, Sam came down the stairs to the back of the seating where the seat started. Um, Brad and I were waiting there for her and we walked her, we walked her down the aisle. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a beautiful day. And we were exhausted. We were absolutely knackered. Um, we left, we got back we were there at the house. We did a little bit of tidying up on the sun, on the Saturday night. They went off to the hotel for their wedding night and we did a little bit of tidying and then agreed to meet the following morning to do brunch. Uh, Rob's mum very kindly agreed to make us all French toast, which was delicious. I'm not normally a French toast fan, but delicious. Sorry if you heard that noise. Somebody going way too fast down my road. Um, and then we did the the final bits of cleaning to organize so that when the rental people came to pick up all their bits and bobs, everything was all in one place. So we spent another couple of hours on another screaming hot day. Uh, and then we packed up our vehicles. I drove home with my mother-in-law, with Olive. Brad drove the T-Bird home. And again, we made a very slow procession down the highway, got home, unpacked. I don't know if I had a nap. I don't normally nap, but I may have. Oh, no, I didn't, because my brother was still around. Uh, my brother, uh, Gary and Krista, were still here. Uh, they met us uh, at our place, uh, and then I drove them to the airport to fly home. And our, my mother-in-law, Olive, stayed for a few more days. Um, and then I had to get ready for the busy work week that was coming up for the 20th anniversary of my small business, our small business. So there was de really no rest for the wicked. Um, I went right into prepping for that with a lot of social media stuff and website stuff, just, you know, boring work stuff that had to be done. And then the sale week was crazy busy. It was incredibly successful and so grateful for that in this economic climate of lack of disposable income that our customers came out and supported us. And then I had another bit of a crash and some bad news. Our part-time employee uh, gave me her notice. She's been looking for a full-time job for a while. She came to us part-time um, after COVID um, looking to get away from a nursing home job. She was burnt out um, and she's been looking for something full-time and she found it. So after after oh, almost three years, um, Pam has left us. We wish her all the well, all the best, and there's definitely no hard feelings on our part. Um, we knew this was coming. We just didn't know when it was coming. It hasn't come at the best time for me personally. <laughs> Um, my lovely Amanda, who works with me, is away on vacation now. Um, so next week it is Brad and I holding the fort. And then on Friday and Saturday it is just me holding the fort because then Brad goes off to Newfoundland for a few days to visit his family because they're going to have kind of a, a, re a small reunion there with all of his family being there. So as I said, uh, the timing for me losing a staff member is not ideal but we're just working through it, which is why, as I said, life for the next few weeks is just very, very busy. And with New Glasgow happening, Brad gets back the day before Woolstock East, Amanda will be back to work for Woolstock East, but I also need to interview and hire a new employee and start training. And then there's other stuff happening later in September. It's just until the middle of October, October, I think when when PEI is over it's going to be a bit busy and then there's potential of something else happening late October into early November so I uh, yeah I'm uh, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed which is 
reflected in the chaos that is my making right now. So I say I'll be back in three weeks. I would really like to be back in three weeks. We will have to see what the world looks like. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. If I have forgotten anything, I will be inserting bits and bobs along the way during editing. I hope not. Um, I thank you all as well at your funny feedback on my last Tipsy with No Notes episode. Um, I was a little nervous when I was starting to edit that episode that it was going to be a bit of a gong show, but uh, it was okay. It was okay. Um, it was better than nothing at all, I guess. So thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me and for being my friends at a distance. Um, I wish you happy making and a lovely transition into whatever season, whether you're heading into fall like we are or you're heading into spring in the Southern Hemisphere. Happy knitting, happy sipping, and I will see you soon. Cheers.